Finding Dory is the long-awaited sequel, which is the sequel to the original Finding Nemo, which came out in 2003, and this one is directed by Andrew Stanton and stars Ellen DeGeneres as, you guessed it, Dory. In this very long-awaited sequel, Dory finally realises and remembers that she actually has a family, and she comes from parents. She remembers that she has parents, and the movie is about Dory setting out to find them, joined by Marlon and Nemo. That's really the basics of this movie. This movie is really just about Dory trying to find out what happened to her parents, and her trying to find the parents and reunite with her parents, and Nemo and Marlon sort of come with her. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I did not know what to expect out of Finding Dory going in, and the main reason why is because Pixar don't really have the greatest reputation as far as making sequels go. A few of Pixar's sequels are really good, like Toy Story 2, and then you have Cars 2. Toy Story 2 is honestly the best sequel Pixar has made, in my opinion. And the main thing that bothered me is that Ellen DeGeneres loved doing Finding Nemo so much, for a long time she'd been nagging Pixar to make a sequel to Finding Nemo. She's always been asking Pixar to do a Finding Nemo 2, do a Finding Nemo 2. And it feels like that Ellen DeGeneres just nagging Pixar is the main reason why they made it. So it felt like a really unnecessary sequel, and it could easily be another Cars 2. Not necessarily as bad as Cars 2, I don't even think that Cars 2 is that bad, but as mediocre as Cars 2, but it could go in a similar direction, basically. The only good reason to make a sequel, if you can really explore a certain aspect of the world, like you can pay homage to the film, to the first film, like we get to know more about the world, we get to know more about the characters, but we go in a different direction in the story and we don't have the same film. So we go in a different direction and it's overall a different film slash different experience. But we get to learn more about the characters and it just feels like it's in the same world. And I feel like if you follow all these rules and you do all this stuff with a sequel, I think a sequel is justified. I was really, really nervous going into this movie. And the only real reason why I was interested in seeing it is just because it got good reviews. But I wasn't really a fan of the trailers, but I still went in open-minded, and I am happy to say this following sentence. Finding Dory is fantastic. Now, is it like one of the best animated movies I've ever seen in my life? No, it's not as good as Inside Out, and it's not as good as other films this year like Zootopia. But it's definitely my second favourite movie so far this year. Which isn't saying much, considering I've only seen like five of them. But I'm happy to say that Finding Dory is much better than the last sequel I saw. Unlike Independence Day Resurgence, which is a very, very forgettable CGI fest and very mediocre. However, this is a movie that is a lot more engaging and I'm going to remember it. I was really nervous going into this movie, I felt like it sounded like a cash grab, but I'm just glad to hear that Pixar knew that they were Pixar and they knew what they were doing. The movie does an excellent job of paying homage to the original film. It's sort of like a prequel-like feeling at the beginning, and the beginning also has one of the scenes from the first movie, only told from Dory's perspective, so the first movie has it from Marlon's perspective, and the sequel has it from Dora's perspective. I really like sequels that do that. There's a lot of references to the original film, which I feel like I understood, and that's mainly just because I saw the original film just a couple days before seeing this movie. I feel like that Pixar haven't really been doing their best lately as far as movies. Like, Brave was very underwhelming, Cars 2 was very mediocre, Monsters University was decent, but it's nothing like Pixar's classic films. The Good Dinosaur was pretty good, but it didn't have that classic Pixar feel to us. Over lately, for the longest time, the only real great Pixar film that I truly loved was Inside Out. Well, now it's Inside Out and Finding Dory. Now, I will admit, it's been a few hours since I've seen the film, and at first I didn't like it as much as the first one, however, now it's really growing on me, and I think I like it around as much. If you ask me to compare it to the first one, I think it's on par. But why do I love this film so much? Well, mainly for one simple reason. 
the exploration of Dory's character. For the original film, I really liked the character of Dory. She was just a fun, simple character. She was fun, she was likeable, she had an entertaining personality, and the gimmick of her short-term memory loss was really well implemented into not only her comedy, but the story. And one thing I love about this movie is how far they take that aspect of her personality. The entire soul and focus of this film is Dory trying to deal with two things. Her missing parents, and her short-term memory loss. I love how the movie explores the ideas of Dory trying to find her parents. Ergo, she has to find clues and hints and directions and find ways of getting to her parents. However, she has short-term memory loss, so she keeps on forgetting recent memories. However, as she forgets things, she's also memory things because we slowly and gradually start to remember more and more about her past. We really get to know more about Dory's past and history and childhood. And as we learn that, we learn more about Dory's personality. And we learn a lot more. And Dory is now a much deeper and a much more fleshed out character now than she was in the first movie. While they do occasionally play her short-term memory loss for last, however, at other times, they take it really seriously. I won't give any examples due to the sake of avoiding spoilers, however, I just feel like that the short-term memory loss was really well done. And it really does go deep into the mind emotionally about how awful a disability like that would be. It's not just a negative thing that Dory has to get around with, it's also a thing that's frustrating and annoying to every other character around her. The script was really well written and they do a great job of balancing of the characters trying to be respectful of it and patient with her, but at the same time also losing their patience and trying to keep their cool. They also come up with really creative origins, for example, her Just Keep Swimming song. They actually come up with the origin of how that song came to be. Despite the fact that Dory is played by a stand-up comedian, Ellen DeGeneres, she does a great job of really conveying a lot of emotion into the scene. I really liked Dory in the first movie, but I love Dory in this one. She's a very well, very likeable, very well fleshed out character, and we learn a lot more about her personality. She's really funny, she's really entertaining, she gives you plenty of laugh out loud moments, but she's also a really emotional and really engaging person that you can relate to. Another character I really liked in this movie was a new character, Hank the Octopus. Or if I'm right, I think Dory called it a Sectopus. I'm just going to call it Octopus. Hank was a great character. I wasn't sure about the idea of his character at first. Now, it was mainly from seeing him in the trailers. However, I really like his character. He has a great character arc and he's pretty selfish and mean-spirited at first. However, he does gradually learn and like, he has a good miniature character arc. Some people say that he's a bit underdeveloped. However, I do like how we give him quite a bit of development, but his character arc isn't really overly played because... He's not a major character. Dory is. One character I was really concerned about going into the movie was the character Destiny. And I just thought, oh no, she's going to be a very mediocre character. I'm not sure about this character. However, I thought Destiny was a fantastic character. She's a great ally. She was lovable. She was entertaining. She was funny. She was everything that could have made this character good. And also she has a mini character arc herself, which again wasn't overly explored, but there's enough about it to make it a proper character arc. Destiny was a much better character than I expected. I really like the new characters and I feel like they're given lots of bright and colourful personalities. And since we get to learn so much more characters and the movie goes in a different direction of the story, it just feels like an overall different film. Yeah, and in some ways it is similar to the first film, like there are some certain plot points that are parallel to the first film, but really, by definition, a sequel is basically more of the original, and they do enough different things with it to make it an overall different film. Overall, I just felt like I had a different experience watching this one than I had with Finding Nemo. They are definitely different films, which is one of the main reasons why I justify Finding Dory existing. It's not just Dory getting lost and so Marla and Nemo have to rescue her. There's a lot more to the story than that. Granted, if that kind of story did happen, then this movie probably would have sucked. Going into artwork, the animation is naturally gorgeous, and that's really expected because this is Pixar we're talking about. I said in my original review that I wasn't sure about the particles because I, like, I didn't know how much it could be improved. However, the animation is improved. The underwater world looks very, very good. It looks very saturated, very colourful. Kids will really dig this movie because it's a very bright and very colourful movie. 
And while it's a bright and colourful movie, I feel like it has a real sense of atmosphere to it. And it helps that I was actually in the second row of the theatre, so I was really close to an already massive screen. And I feel like that kind of helps because I was really sucked into this world and this movie has a real great atmosphere. Sometimes it's really, really bright and colourful and then other times it's really green or really grey or very colourless or lifeless. Again, it has a real sense of atmosphere. I heard that Hank the Octopus was a really, really hard thing for Pixar to create. Like, it's a very complex model and that's because Hank doesn't have a skeleton. And it shows that they put a lot of effort into Hank because his animation is phenomenal. The way he moves, the way he uses his camouflage, like Hank is really just there to show off what Pixar can do with their effects. And I have no problem with that because his character was incorporated into the story really, really well. And his animation is phenomenal. The fact that he can camouflage himself, like the, some of the stuff that Hank physically does in this movie get really, really creative, and I feel like that they've shown too much of that stuff in the trailer. Add that to the beautiful colours and the atmosphere and the water effects are fantastic. This is a gorgeous looking movie. But then what do you expect from Pixar? I mean, really, what do you expect from them? And one thing I really have to talk about is the score for this movie. The score for this movie is beautiful. The main score is called Unforgettable. And it is one of the most beautiful themes I've ever heard to a movie, ever. I don't like it as much as Zootopia's main score, Try Everything, by Shakira, because I just think that Shakira is very joyful and very bouncy, very fun to listen to. However, the score for this movie is beautiful, and it fits the tone of the movie perfectly. I love the score for this movie. And one other thing, stay after the credits. There is an end credit scene at the end of this movie, and if you have the patience, sit through the entire movie, sit through the entire credit sequence, and stay after the credits. There is an end credit scene, and it is hilarious. Now, is it perfect? No. I feel like that a lot of movies aren't perfect, and I have two minor complaints. For starters, the movie takes itself very seriously sometimes, and in some parts it's trying to be very, very emotional. And there are times where I think it is trying really hard to make you cry, and I just wasn't feeling it. I don't cry in movies, however, there are movies that got me really, really emotional. And I felt like that the movie was trying to tug into my emotions, and it was trying to get me to get that emotional feeling. And I was really close to getting emotional, but I just didn't feel it. I was invested in the story and the characters, I just wasn't emotionally invested. I didn't feel any tears, I didn't feel any emotion inside me. I feel like it was really, really trying to get me emotional, and I just feel like it failed. Another thing I had a problem with was really, again, the character in Nemo. Now, it's okay for Nemo to not really play that much of a large role in, the fir in this movie, because unlike the first movie, he's not the title character. And I like how Nemo has more to do in this movie, like he's not just the person to join Marlin. Like, Marlin is helping Dory, and Nemo is not really just chugging along just for the sake of it, because he's Marlin's son, like, just being a useless character. But he is pretty proactive, and he does do and suggest things, and he does contribute to the plot. I just feel like that maybe Marlon and Nemo could have maybe played a bit of a bigger role into the story. It's a bit hard to get into for spoilers sakes, but you will probably know what I mean when you see the film yourself. I loved Finding Dory, and it's a movie that's been getting better for me the more I think about it. Do I like it enough to buy it on DVD or Blu-ray? No, I don't. I don't see myself spending money to buy this movie, but if I was to buy it, I would definitely buy it on Blu-ray. Maybe one day, but at the moment, I just don't see myself spending that money. But this movie is fantastic. If you loved Finding Nemo, you will love this movie. This is a fantastic movie. But overall, if you're planning on seeing a movie this holidays, definitely check out Finding Dory. It's far better than Independence Day Resurgence, and I'm assuming it's going to be far better than... <coughs> Ghostbusters. I personally really, really enjoyed this movie. I think this movie is really, really good. I'm going to give Finding Dory an A. Guys, definitely check this movie out if you have the time or money, because it's definitely my second favourite film so far this year. Stay tuned for my next video. Hasta la vista, baby.